Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about horse riding gear and equipment for our horse. I did a video talking about the rider, which I'll leave linked down below. And there's so much equipment out there in the horse industry. If you are a rider, it's hard sometimes to choose what equipment do I use? Should I go bitless? Should I ride with a bit? You know, what kind of saddle should I be getting? And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of my perspective and what I think about when it comes to equipment. And hopefully that will be a help to you. So there's three things that I consider when choosing equipment. And these things are the effectiveness of that equipment, the comfort of it, and the safety of it. The first piece of equipment we're going to talk about is our bridle. The function of the bridle is to back up our seat and legs when we're riding our horse to communicate different movements to him under saddle. When it comes to choosing a bridle, there's a huge array of options out there. Tons of different colors and styles, everything from Western to English. So many things to think about and consider when picking out a bridle. So you can ride in bridles that are bitless, as you can see legend modeling here, or you could ride in a bridle with a bit. I've ridden in both bridles with a bit and bitless bridles, and I found them both to be effective when communicating to my horse under saddle. One of the big things to consider when it comes to effectiveness of any equipment you're using under saddle, a big part of it is the part the rider plays in it. So understanding how to use your equipment is a big role in how effective it is. But the other thing that really makes it effective or ineffective is the fit of it. So if we have a bridle with a bit or without that is fit incorrectly, it can cause uh, confusion with the horse. It's both bridles are working off of pressure. So bitless bridles apply pressure to the bridge of the nose. They apply pressure to the jaw and to the pull of the horse, uh, depending on what type of bitless bridle you're riding in. Bridles with a bit are applying pressure to the palate and to the tongue uh, and to the bars of the mouth. So whenever we're riding, applying pressure, we want to make sure that we're applying it in the right areas so that our communication is clear and our horse is as comfortable as possible. So having a professional that is knowledgeable, look at your bridle and make sure it's a good fit is really going to help with the effectiveness of that bridle. So now let's talk about the safety of our bridle. When it comes to safety with all equipment, the first thing I recommend is checking your equipment regularly. When we have bridles that are tied together with some leather, maybe they've got some Chicago screws holding them together, those things can come loose and we can end up having our bridle come apart when we're riding. So we always wanna check our equipment for any wear or any uh, loosening pieces, make sure everything is nice and secure before going out. The other element of safety that I consider is the throat latch on the bridle. So does my bridle have a throat latch? Sometimes in the Western industry, you'll have bridles such as this one that don't have a throat latch. Um, and I always like riding in a bridle like this one with a throat latch because it prevents the bridle from going over the horse's head when you're riding. And if you have them without a throat latch, they can end up going over the head and you can end up riding bridleless maybe before you're ready. So finally, let's talk about the comfort. We all want our horses to be comfortable in the equipment that they wear. And there are some things that influence comfort, both in a bitless bridle and a bridle with a bit. So I'm going to be breaking down each one of these and talking to you a little bit about what makes them more severe or less severe. The first question that I ask when I'm considering the comfort of a bitless bridle is how does it work? Here we have a mechanical hackamore. This has a shank on it, you can see right here. And the shank gives the rider more leverage. So when you pick up the rein, the pressure that you're applying is increased by using the leverage of the shank and applying that pressure to the nose. Here we have a standard side pole, which is basically a halter with rings on the side. So there's no leverage on this. This means when the rider picks up the reins, the amount of pressure they're applying is the amount of pressure that the horse feels. So when we look at these side by side, the mechanical hackamore is gonna be more severe than the side pole. The next thing that I think about when it comes to comfort is the thickness of the material that you're using. So here we have a bitless bridle that is a thinner material, and here we have one that is a thicker material. The thinner material is concentrating the pressure that the rider is applying in a smaller surface area, which can make it a little more uncomfortable. The thicker material is spreading that pressure over a wider surface area, so this can make it more comfortable for the horse. The next thing to consider when it comes to comfort 
is what material is the bitless bridle made out of? So here we have a bitless bridle with a raw hide on the nose. And here we have a bitless bridle with a thick leather piece on the nose. So the raw hide is a little bit harder material and is going to be a little bit more uncomfortable than the leather material is gonna be. So now let's talk about our bit and the comfort of a bridle with a bit. This is a very um, complicated topic. There's tons of bits out there on the market. They all work differently. And depending on what unique horse you're working with, each horse could be comfortable in a different type of bit. But there is one general rule that I consider when it comes to uh, finding a comfortable bit for my horse. And that is the thicker the bit, generally speaking, the more comfortable it is because it's concentrating the pressure over a wider surface area. Whereas a thin bit tends to be more uncomfortable because it's concentrating the pressure in a smaller surface area. There are exceptions to this rule, however, and when it comes to finding the best possible bit for you and your horse that really fits them and they're comfortable in, I always recommend consulting with a professional bit fitter. This is someone who has dedicated a lot of their time and energy to the study of the function of the bit and the fit of it and can help you choose the best one for you and your horse. So we've talked a little bit about the comfort of our horse with a bitless bridle and with a bit. I wanted to talk just briefly about your head stall, which is this part of the bridle here. Now we have traditional head stalls like this and we have anatomical head stalls like this one. Now anatomical head stalls are a little bit newer to the horse industry in the last few years. You don't see as many of them on the market, but they're becoming more common. And these bridles alleviate pressure around the horse's nerves and give the horse more field of vision. You can see how they're cut back here. So I'm personally always interested in making my horse more comfortable and I'm planning on getting an anatomical bridle in the near future. And I'll share with you guys what my experience is when I get one. So moving along, we're gonna talk about our reins. Your reins attach to your bridle and help you to be able to direct your horse when you're under saddle. Now there's a huge variety of reins out there on the market, everything from leather to rubber to rope and much more. When it comes to the safety of your reins, you wanna check them regularly. Some reins are attached with a Chicago screw like these reins, and that screw can come loose, so you wanna make sure it's tight. Uh, check it each day. And some reins are tied together like this pair, you want to make sure that the tie is nice and tight, the leather isn't wearing out. I prefer the buckle-on reins. These I find to be really easy to change bridles with and I find them to be really durable. When it comes to the comfort of your reins and holding them, every pair of reins has a little bit different feeling. So if you can, you can go up to a local tax store and feel the reins, make sure they're a good size for your hands, they feel comfortable for you to hold before getting under saddle and using them at home. So we've talked a lot about our bridle and I broke this video up into two parts to make it a little bit more digestible for you guys. So in the next part, I'm gonna be talking about your saddle, your saddle pad, your stirrups and more. So stay tuned for that. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video.